<laughs> Hello fellow YouTubers, uh, today's Wednesday, uh, September 5. Yes, it's, um, we had uh, quite a bit of rain earlier this morning, but uh, it cleared away and uh, turned out to be quite a nice day. Yes, it was the 13 mil in the gauge this morning, but uh, there hasn't been anything else uh, since then. And the forecast is uh, just the odd shower, yeah, just the odd shower. Uh, I, um, I got a, I got a, a comment from a, a subscriber and a chap who comments on a somewhat regular basis about uh, uh, the description. Uh, what does it say? A wonderful description of Hadley's knee. Made me feel quite sick. <laughs> oh dear. Well, I, that's, I've often said that um, the memories of my childhood are quite vivid, and uh, not all of it, of course. And uh, that's why I'm able to relate um, these stories um, and these incidences um, so accurately. And, and they are accurate, very, very, very accurate. I could probably even do better, because obviously I've got to rewrite simple things. And uh, well, it was my first book, and I've got to rewrite the um, the novella that followed just another day. But, um, yes, <laughs> sorry about that, my friend, sorry about it made you feel, feel sick. <laughs> but I, as I said in the reply that uh, it all comes back to what we experience ourselves. Uh, as a kid, I don't think there, there would be many kids who didn't have skin knees. And, you know, I, I vividly remember having... Um, not on my knee, but on my lower leg, a flap of skin hanging off. And, and um, as with Hadley, um, yeah, I remember his knee. It, uh, it, it did make me feel a little bit squeamish. And like my brother said, it was <laughs> make him feel sick. Look, uh, yeah, so that's how I'm, I'm able to write about the things I do. Um, about myself and my childhood and, and well, a lot of things through the years. But, uh, uh, anyway, as my dear friend uh, Glenda, uh, aka G.K. Fallon, would say, anyway, 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 <laughs> well, I, I watched this um, Avengers Infinity War. Mm. Oh, disappointing. Uh, special effects, ooh, ooh, those are wonderful special effects. Uh, but um, it was too much. It was too long, and I was, yeah, I was disappointed. Yeah, I was really disappointed. In it. Uh, I won't tell you anything about it in case you haven't seen it. And uh, because I am an, a, a fan of the Avengers, I I, I like the the earlier Avenger films, and I like Captain America. But this, yeah, no, I don't think I'd be watching it again. But anyhow. Who knows? Who knows? I might end up with um, with, with Alzheimer's and uh, totally forget I've ever seen it and seen and everything else or seen all the books I've gotten. But everything will be totally new to me and I'll say, well, yeah, okay, I'll watch that. Right, yeah. I haven't watched Taken 3 as yet, but I will get around to it. And um, I had another, another comment from uh, an Aussie lass. And uh, who goes under the name of Shy Girl. She's a kooky, nutty one. She, but I mean that in a real kind way. She's a lovely young woman. And um, she, she loved the, um, the pop vinyl. And I said to her in a reply that my son still has quite a stock of pop vinyls available. And if she's interested, maybe she'd like to buy some. Even have a look at what he's got. Um, uh, just let me know and I will put her in contact. So if there's anyone else who are watching um, this video in Oz, the great land down under, uh, who's interested as well, well, contact me by a comment and uh, I will give you some um, information to go on as well. So you can contact uh, him directly. And uh, if you want to, that is. 
Yeah, I will do a reading from Simple Things, and this is the. Um, oh, I should have I should have taken these out. Really, it's, it's getting a bit heavy. I um about the race between the bike and the cart. Okay, All right. Sunday morning. It was quiet. Here it was going on toward 10.30 and from our vantage point at the top of the hill it was as if my brother and I were the only two people in the street. Nobody had walked up or down the hill. Not a single car had passed us going in either direction. If it hadn't been for a light easterly breeze rustling the leaves of the trees across the road and the trill of a distant whistle from a paper boy doing his rounds the silence would have been eerie. Until the voice. What are you boys doing? It was a soft voice, a friendly voice, but it made Richard and I French before we turned and saw the old man standing on the front line lawn behind us. Waiting for a friend, sir, I replied. A friend, eh? Yes, sir. And what happens when your friend arrives? He said with a smile. <coughs> then we're going to have a race down the hill. A foot race? No, sir. I'll be riding my billy cart and my friend will be riding his bike. Billy cart? Well, well, well. I didn't think children rode billy carts anymore. Oh yes, my brother and I ride ours all the time. You must be the only ones. Yes, sir. You know, my young friends, there was a time when it seemed just about every boy had a billy cart. Or some contraction had four wheels, anyhow. I had a scooter when I was a boy, and don't see them around anymore either. Oh well, maybe they'll come back someday. Wouldn't be, wouldn't surprise me at all. Maybe, I replied. Ah, that must be your friend coming to a stop at the curb now. Good luck with your race. I'll leave you to it. Bye for now. Goodbye, I said. No sooner had the old man turned his back and taken a few steps toward his house, Richard looked at me and said, Gee, Georgie, I didn't think he was ever going to leave. I said he was only being friendly. <laughs> and besides, it's his place. He does that all the time, David said. Just about every day I ride past him, he's talking to someone over the fence. Well, he's not here now, I said. So let's get this show on the road, eh? The rules of the race were simple. There would be no peddling by David. No paddling by me. Strictly a freewheeling race from a standing start. From a point where, as soon as David released his brake, and I lifted my heel, we would instantly set the wheels in motion. You can be the starter, Richard, I said. You know, ready, set, go. Yeah, yeah, I know. Ready, set, go, he replied with a hint of testiness. No, not so fast. Ready, pause, set, pause, go. Got it? Oh yeah, right. Ready, set, go. I gave him the thumbs up. Ready, set, don't go. He laughed. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I thought. Always a smart ass. <laughs> okay, this time for real. Ready, set, with cat-like reflexes, I raised the heel of my right shoe the very instant I heard the G 
in go rolling forward and quickly losing David in my peripheral vision as if he was standing still I've attempted to glance over my right shoulder to see where he was but I knew from past experience what can happen when one is not looking where one is going so I dismissed the impulse only a handful of seconds into the race and I have the advantage the smaller wheels of the cart gathering speed far more rapidly at the onset than the much larger wheels of the bike. I didn't know that then of course, nor did I know that that would change in a hurry. All I knew was that I was leading, going faster than my opponent and giving me not just a glimmer of hope, but a pulse raising expectation that I might, just might, have a real chance of winning. Go Georgie! I heard Richard yell as he runs down the hill behind us. Go brother! Go, go, go! The hairs in the back of my neck bristle from the sound of his shrill voice. His nepotistic urging on. Go George! Go, go, go! As the descent steepens, I lean back as far as the length of the steering row permits, the small of my back touching the top of the backrest, legs straight, chin resting against my chest, eyes wide, the heels of my shoes pressed hard against the front axle. I move faster now, each section of the footpath rushing towards and disappearing under the cart with every heartbeat. The wheels are union of sound as they clatter over the concrete surface. And still I lead. Go! You! But my brother's voice is lost to the rush of the wind. The race is mine, I think, as I pass the midway point of Warwick Street to my right. But as I rocket towards the beginning of the curve, I hear a bell. And out of the corner of my right eye, I catch a glimpse of something that wasn't there a moment before. <laughs> I blink, hoping it will go away. An illusion, perhaps, or a figment of my imagination. But in my heart of hearts, I know it's not. It's David, and he's gaining. He fingers the bell in rapid succession as we enter the curve. Ring, 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 ring. Then all is quiet as the slingshot effect increases our speed. As I fly around the corner and hit the straight, David in an instant is level with me. Then he's gone, leaving me for dead as he shoots down the hill. Ring, 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 ring. By the time he brings the bike to a stop opposite Lansdowne Street, I have just veered left, leaving the footpath and entering the field as he turns around and paddles toward me, coming to a stop as he enters Margaret Street. The race is won. The bragging rights are his. But he doesn't. There are no smart Alec remarks, no punching of the air, no blowing on his fingertips and rubbing them vigorously on his shirt. He just looks at me and says, I thought you hadn't me beat there a while, George. Yeah, I said. I thought so, too. It was a good race, though, wasn't it, he said. It was a good race. Better for him because he was the winner. But a damn good race, nonetheless. I cast aside the feelings a loser always has. Look at him smile and say, Sure was, David. Sure was. That was just one of many challenges we would set ourselves during the ensuing years, even though we never saw them as such. David and I, Richard Hadley and I, spur of the moment things. It seemed like a good idea at the time thing. Kids things. Simple things. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, I'll try and uh, 
I'll try and get some different content going from just from readings. I know that there's a few of you who do, quite a few of you who do like the readings, but uh, I just can't do continue on doing readings. I've got to put other stuff in there as well. Make make my channel more interesting because my subscriber rate's slowly going up and up and up, and I don't want to disappoint all other the other people. Other. What am I up to now? 679, I think that's good. Maybe I will make a thousand before I kick the bucket. It would be nice. It would be nice to make a thousand subscribers. If for no other reason than I did. Well, I want to thank you for watching. Can you hear those frogs? There are two of them. There are two frogs. There's one over there and there's one there. And until next time, uh, bye for now.